I'm John Gobel. I'm an associate professor of art at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. In 2016, I was definitely jumped on the chance to collaborate, to team teach with marine science computer science, taking coral ecology and visualizing it in a way that people could understand. We had a lot of conversations about the impact that coral has on the health of the ocean and also different types of coral, the sizes of them. Um, this is a Emandrinus. It's a cauliflower coral. It's about one cubic foot in size, which is about the size of a milk crate. And this coral was taken from Waiope, which is in Una, in 2018. We had a major eruption. It actually filled in that Kapoho tide pool, where this coral was native to, and where it was living. It's a prime snorkeling spot on the island with wonderful species. So it's gone. It's completely filled in. And so how did I choose that specific coral? Well, I started this project before any of that volcanic eruption happened. So it wasn't because of that. It was because I thought it was one of the coolest looking corals. It just visually had the most interesting features, the most branches on it and the spacing and the lobes, the way they undulate. They had the most potential to be enlarged in a way that I think would be interactive. That's one of the cool things that John is doing is he's preserving these specimens in a format where you can see them in virtual reality, or you can just use a 3D viewer and kind of rotate, see what the corals looked like. So I started with this idea of enlarging it to larger than life, bigger than me. I saw this giant 3D printer. I can't remember what they had printed out there, but it was, it was huge. And so I put in my pitch for why we needed to be funded for, for various creative media endeavors. And they funded the printer. On my research end, I was able to then spend some time figuring out how I could take this project onto another level. What I did was I took that model that John Burns had photogrammetry stitched together. In my mind, I thought, well, this is going to be super easy. I'll just chop it up and run it through the printer. When you blow something up 80,000%, which is how much enlarged I made it. You can see all the faces from the polygons. It didn't look very good. I took the model and I cut it into quarters. And that's what I blew up 80,000%. So I took that and I cut that quarter into some 100 to 200 pieces. So I remeshed the surface, I smoothed it, and I, I developed a process where I'd remesh and smooth and remesh and smooth. And I might do 10 iterations of that to get the face count up to about 500,000. And then I had a nice smooth model. So then I'd take that and then reassemble it in Mesh Mixer to create the whole model. You guys can see these have holes in them for access. Some of them have a lot of holes in them for access so that I can reach in from any angle as I'm putting this together. And you can see behind me this right here, it weighs like 50 pounds. Magnets aren't gonna hold that together. So I decided at that point, I'd better start assembly to figure out what I need to do engineering wise to each piece so that I can actually put this together. And so that's when I started with these holes so I can access. And I also started putting in holes for hardware. I started this in the summer of 2018. I used that whole summer to actually cut this model up into pieces. This actually ends up being, I think about 200 cubic feet when it's done. So it's about six feet by six feet by six feet. I estimated about 6,000 hours so far on the printer. So the first one I printed was, you know, relatively large. I could print something this size with maybe half a spool. So I learned, you know, using Mesh Mixer, how to hollow a model out, how thick it needed to be to actually be strong enough, light enough, what the infill should be on the hollow. And ever since I started creating these access holes, the printer has no problem at all printing without a support, this kind of shape, as long as this is vertical. Obviously what it can't do is print this sort of shape on top. So I figure out, okay, I'll just print it like this. And it prints beautifully from bottom to top this way. And with these holes, there's no filament in there, right? So I'm using a lot less filament these days. I could probably print about four or five of these with one spool. I envision taking this model and individually painting the pieces prior to assembly and then probably doing quite a bit of touch up after it's assembled. I would like to try and texture it as well. I'd like to make it look as a healthy coral would look, which can at times be really colorful, really beautiful. Why use PLA? It's affordable, number one, but it's a bioplastic, so it's a sustainable resource. PLA is made out of a corn-based plastic. And it will break down. If the breaking down is facilitated with heat, this plastic actually will break down and biodegrade pretty rapidly. 
I've got 72 pieces behind me and I think I've got 125 to 200 pieces. I still have some work to do on the model to cut it up more. I'm trying to bolt everything together just with a quarter inch zinc plated steel bolt. This piece actually goes in right here. It's bolted. I can get my hand in there, believe it or not. This piece is bolted to this piece, then this piece is bolted to this piece, and it just goes down the chain until I get to the terminus, you know, this part, which has a lot of access holes on it, so I should be able to, to bolt it in without too much trouble. A majority of this, no, no uh, support structures at all. I call it larger than life because it is larger than life, but it puts you as a human being in the perspective of a coral polyp or even a fish in terms of a relationship of the scale. And so I find that quite intriguing because then you see it in a way that you never would see it before. To put yourself in a position where you're part of the marine life scale-wise, I think raises some interesting questions and would spark the curiosity of young minds, old minds, and everything in between about what coral is and what is the impact that it has on the ecosystem and the oceans and how that ocean ecosystem then affects our terrestrial life. I did want to use this as a prototype for a much larger version. And I envisioned some works in public where this is made out of a material that kids can climb on it and stuff like that. I think the library is a good place to have this where people can interact with it and get good visibility for it. We do actually hang quite a few exhibitions in the library, so we get a lot of foot traffic in there. Even now, with uh, the pandemic, the library has remained open. I'm excited about setting up over there and getting this in front of more eyes and talking to people about it. I learned so much from doing this that now I, I can visualize how I could make it even bigger. That was my ultimate goal, is like how big can I make something on this 3D printer that has a two cubic foot build wall?